a um, some developments uh, in the discussion we had last week in regards to the issue of homosexuality. Now, I, I'm, I'm tired of it. You're tired of it. And that's exactly what the other side is counting on, that we are so tired of it that we just give up, that we just simply retreat and uh, and abandon um, everything, leave everything to the, the, the hordes, the Antifa hordes, um, <laughs> which uh, I saw a uh, I saw a study uh, from Europe that said that uh, 92 percent of leftist um, protesters by study live with their parents. <laughs> <laughs> And normally when they do end up publishing pictures of the Antifa people, one-on-one, -on -one, they wouldn't be overly intimidating. It's, uh, it's when they're wearing masks and helmets and, uh, and uh, beating at your head with a, uh, with a cudgel. That's the, anyone's dangerous a situation like that. But one-on-one, -on -one, not so much. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of it all, too. And it would be one thing if we were all united. We were all on the same page. There wasn't division taking place within the body out of tradition or ignorance or the influx of external traditions and sources, but that's not the situation we find ourselves in. And let me just tell you what I think is going to happen. This is what I fear is going to happen. I hope it doesn't, but I think it probably will. Um, a couple weeks ago, Rachel Held Evans passed away at a very young age, and she had made a name for herself by her theological journey. That's the term that we use now, is I'm taking a theological journey. Well, when you think about what theological means, knowledge of God, there can be a journey in theology where you're deepening your knowledge of God, and you're going more and more by trust and faith into his revelation. But that's not what we're talking about. When we talk about this kind of a journey, we're, we're talking about uh, abandoning foundational beliefs that we've had in the past. Now, if you have foundational beliefs in your past that need to be abandoned, um, that's a good thing. But really the best way to test that is, am I abandoning foundational beliefs in such a way that it is increasing my fundamental acceptance and belief in the whole counsel of God found in the scripture and scripture alone? Or is my analysis of what I used to believe causing me to lose confidence in the ability of scripture and scripture alone to provide me with the needed light and guidance that I would desire to have as a follower of Christ. Unfortunately, uh, when people on the left today talk about theological journeys, it is, as we've seen with people like Peter Enns, Rachel Held Evans, Jen Hatmaker, um, it is a journey away from biblical sufficiency um, biblical inspiration, biblical inerrancy, into a self-made reimagining of God, and therefore uh, that leaves a huge vacuum, and a vacuum, nature abhors a vacuum, and therefore it will be filled um, in our day with a massive influx of cultural stuff. Um, and so, uh, I didn't say that Peter Enns had gone to secularism. I said he, he has gone on a journey and has abandoned what he once believed and now believes something very different. You need to listen carefully. Um, anyway, um, well, hey, if you're going to ruminate and channel and demonstrate you're not listening to me, I'm going to correct you. Anyway, um, so this uh, situation with Beth Moore... I am concerned because she has such a large following um, that if she were to come out and say, you know what, 
Now, there's, there's no question in my mind, and we're going to look at this in a second. There's no question in my mind that she's already experienced a major paradigm shift over the past three or four years. She even gives that time period herself in what she says. Uh, three or four years in regards to the issue of homosexuality. Um, but she, right now, she is well aware of the fact that if she were to follow that to its logical conclusion, um, that the slamming of doors would be very, very, very loud as yet. That may change in the future, and that may be what gives her the freedom to eventually really express where she's coming from now. But she would not be the first person to come out and say, you know, I've been spending time in prayer, and I really believe Jesus has spoken to me. And he says that I am to accept my LGBTQ P plus. Who knows? Depending on what year it is, I guess. Um, brothers and sisters, um, and uh, that this is a you know a move of the Holy Spirit of God in our day. And, and she wouldn't be the first person. There, there are dozens of books out there saying this very thing. And the resultant, given how many of her followers have already demonstrated that they have a very not only very strong personal attachment to her, but a significantly depreciated view of biblical sufficiency. Just think how many pastors, elders, deacons in Southern Baptist churches and like evangelical churches, how many of them would be influenced by wives who would now be saying to them, we need to really think about this because if Beth Moore says we need to accept this, then we need to accept this. I think it would have a huge impact. I think it would have a huge impact. And um, so when I see how she's handling this, she's handling this like a person trying to figure out how she can do that without substantially damaging um, her ministry and her opportunities of influence. That's what it looks like to me. Because the questions she was initially asked were fair questions, she won't answer them. And now that it has come out that she has edited a book and removed material from the book, specifically on the subject of homosexuality, and has stated that she overspoke. She went beyond Scripture by a mile. Any author whose book has been read by more than a thousand people or 500 people, um, no, I better not use numbers again. Um, any author whose book has been written, read by anyone, how's that? Snowflakes. Um, <laughs> owes the people who took the time to read their work an explanation when you, without notation, and without explanation, in the book itself, change the fundamental argumentation of the book on an important point, especially a point such as homosexuality today that is being used as the primary mechanism of seeking to marginalize and silence the Christian church in the United States of America, where you happen to live, and where the majority of your followers are. Uh, is, is that really arguable? I, I can't see how that's arguable. I really, I don't get it. That, that seems obvious to me. But it seemingly isn't for, uh, for other people. In Praying God's Word, she says in an article from June 6th, July 6th, sorry. When I wrote PGW many years ago, I exceeded scripture and singled out same-sex sin as particularly satanic. Well, let me remind you, um, and I transcribed this, um, but let me remind you, this is actually a photocopy. Uh, well, not a photocopy. What do, what do you call it? A graphic. Um, from the book itself, the, the printed edition. 
She writes, before we proceed to our scripture prayers for overcoming sexual strongholds, we are wise to address another deadly sexual assault of the evil one in our society, homosexuality. Now, she didn't say that was the only one, but she identified it as a deadly sexual assault of the evil one in our society. Mrs. Moore, is homosexuality a deadly sexual assault of the evil one in our society? Or have you changed your mind on that? Is that a fair question? If you, if you delete something from your book and say that I went way beyond Scripture, then this is, this is not just a fair question. This is a necessary question. If this was excessive, then what isn't? What's, 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 the, what's the new teaching on this subject? That it's just a, not a particularly deadly sexual assault? A sexual assault of the evil one? Does the evil one have anything to do with it? Or is this now just a natural thing? It's just an orientation thing. It just sort of happens. I have wonderful news for anyone who has struggled with homosexual sin. Do you n now believe that you should not struggle against homosexual sin or that homosexuality isn't sin? God indeed can deliver you and anxiously awaits your full cooperation. Well, certainly not how I would put it, but God indeed can deliver you. So do you believe... Beth Moore, that God can deliver someone from homosexual sin? Or do you believe there are certain people who are constitutively homosexual and that this is only for people who may be orient, orient, orientation-wise, not oriented, but orientation-wise, um, heterosexual, but fall into homosexual sin? There have been some, believe me, I've read enough books on this. There are people who take every single possible option on various of these things. But do you be really, really believe that God indeed can deliver you? Because that is a very unpopular position. I mean, you would not be invited to revoice if you actually hold out the idea. I mean, if you listen to Greg Johnson at the PCA two weeks ago, he said, I've talked to all the leading uh, leaders. Don't know of anyone who's ever been. So do not let Satan shame you into not seeking forgiveness, fullness, and complete restoration in Jesus Christ. How is that overreaching scripture? We need to know. Um, I, so I actually know some people who could probably tell me exactly how many copies of this book have sold. There are some people who have that kind of inside information. And I would say, since you indicated yourself that it continues to be used, it's sold tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of copies, right? And if you're saying that this is overreaching scripture, you need to explain why. And is it overreaching scripture to say that you should not, this says you should seek forgiveness, fullness, and complete restoration in Jesus Christ. Yes or no? How is that an overreach of scripture? You said, I know complete transformation is possible not only because God's word says so, but because I have witnessed it with my own eyes. Now, you say, I know plenty of believers who have been set free from homosexuality. Yes or no? Were you telling the truth or were you not? And if, if you said that God's word says so, does it no longer say so? Were you wrong in saying that it says so? I cannot believe the number of people who are going, you can't ask these questions. You're just being mean. You're just attacking poor Beth. Is there no possibility for meaningful truth-based discussion in our society or in the church anymore? 
I get it in the church. I, I mean, I get it in the society. It, critical theory, the intersectionality, the degradation of our society has created an entire generation of snowflakes. The generation of perpetual outrage. I will be offended by whatever you say. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. It is now everything's a macroaggression. We've gotten past the microaggression stuff now. So I get how in the society you can't have this conversation. But my goodness, if in the church someone that people watch by the thousands can publish a book used in churches and then remove this stuff and go, I, I'm not answering any questions about that. No, that's that. And then their followers go, you terrible, mean people, you're picking on little Beth. That's how churches die, folks. That's how churches die. And so she, she said in an article, like I said, uh, published on the 6th, as the years passed, I increasingly winced at what I had conveyed about the basic rule of thumb in authorship is that it is better not to go back uh, and edit an old book, but rather let it just phase out and simply don't make the same mistake in the future. What was the mistake? Given the words, identify the mistakes that we know. The problem was because PGW is a handbook and not a regular nonfiction book, it didn't phase out in the same way. I've had, uh, I have had many years to test the fruit of what I wrote and have seen over and over again that numerous readers who had gone to this chapter with their struggles came to my words and proceeded no further. My words had kept them from God's words. That, to me, is a pretty serious stumbling block. We need to know why. I, it is not in any way, shape, or form an attack or anything else. It is simple it's truthfulness. It's, it's speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. Now, you know, and as soon as this came out, she's like, well, I'm going to take some time off from Twitter because everyone's just so mean and nasty. And it's, you know, she immediately pulled the martyr card and it's like, nope, sorry, that, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. This is not going to go go away. Um, as long as uh, Mrs. Moore wants to continue to speak and to tell the rest of us um, a message from God, as she keeps saying, uh, well, then we've got a message for her. You need to answer these questions. Just, it's, it's, Dr. Moeller's right. We cannot hide anywhere. And this is a serious subject.